Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. I know I usually have one type of genre after the other, but uh, I was actually working on this two hours, two to three hours every day for the past three days. Three, six, nine. That's nine hours of... Okay, well anyway, so I downloaded this science, the X science, and it it works great it it just you know i have to start using it but it works great it had all the 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 green ones i think are the ones that i haven't gotten yet and the yellow ones that are like blanked out are the ones that i've already pretty much mined out now the x science said that i was missing some science from biomes around the area like one of them was the island uh biome apparently the island runway biome so i got onto the orange little rocket plane that we built and head over there in order to get some science granted every time i freaking landed on the damn place i was always landing upside down which sucked but i hadn't really nailed that kind of landing just yet i mean yeah i haven't i, I haven't nailed the landing just yet I, I got it on several other occasions but no not this time so i went over there twice i was testing out these new drop tank well it kind of exploded there but it's it's like it's way better than having it on the nose obviously um it unfortunately it, there's nothing connecting it so it looks like it's levitating but you know if you use your imagination you can pretend there's something on there had to break the kerbal out because it landed upside down again but as you can see there's no there's no other science i tried to do the whole jumping in the air to get flying data nothing there's no other science the only science there is something like island runway science and that's it i went to the top of the tower got a beautiful view but that was the only science that was there later i'd go back and try to get more science from it but it was pretty much tapped out next someone in the comments below mentioned that you could get splash data from the grasslands and the deserts on the other side of the mountain so i took our orange little rocket plane and headed over there to try to get as much science as possible from the splashdown data i would be i would be uh, i would be uh, just just surprised about how valuable this little orange rocket plane became in our quest for not only science, but as you will see, monies. I just love these drop tanks. They increase the range by like tenfold it's incredible yes you see explosions there it's pretty much because of the fact that the rocket engine is destroying the decoupler as it leaves however the next mission right here is when i was looking for the northeast launch pad it's kind of in a small little cut in between the ocean and whatever's but when i landed there there was no science i was very puzzled until i had jebediah walk out and get on top of the actual launch pad itself and the science was on the launch pad no other place there's no science at the water tower there's no science anywhere else except the launch pad which means that i had to take this mother sucker and land it directly on the launch pad if i wanted to get any valuable science whatsoever I got a lot of science out of that too however the problem is is that no matter how much science i got i was running out of money launching these missions so i had to start grinding for money surprisingly enough again this little orange rocket plane delivered the kind of money that i was getting was from testing stuff so testing parachutes testing the couplers engine splash data all that jazz and I, I wouldn't even cheap out if it was on the launch pad and you could activate it and get the science from it i would go ahead and put that shit underneath the actual rocket plane activate it get the science from the launch pad quote unquote quotation marks whatever and then launch my ass 
from that launch pad into wherever atmosphere that it needed in order to get more science. Try to kill two birds with one stone kind of thing. I would never do just one mission. Right now my limit is two missions, so I'd always try to find two missions so I could knock them out in one go. It was a grind. I'm talking about an hour in the morning, two hours when I come back from work for the past three mother flipping days. Someone said go, to go ahead and put like a little winglet on the on the front nose of the craft in order to keep it from popping when it fell on its belly. Thank you for that, by the way. You're amazing. Loved it. It actually worked. It would, it would, it would pop and sacrifice itself. So, cool. Now, finally, after all that grinding, I was, un I was able to upgrade the space plane hangar and upgrade the runway. Look at that, 600,000 Kerbal Bucks. Fucking hell, man. But this unlocked the ability to create larger, more complicated, heavier, longer craft. I was no longer st stuck with 30 parts. I could go up to like 200 plus parts. I was no longer stuck with, you know, something like 18 tons. I could go way higher than that. So the first craft I wanted to build was something that would could get me a lot of money very quickly. And this, of course, is tourism. Tourism is like, it's not... You know, the very best way to get money, obviously. But it's a hell of a lot better than the whole testing crap. The more tourists you can get up there and complete a mission, the bigger the paycheck. You can get anywhere between twenty to $30,000 easy. Especially if you land near the KSC. And especially if you have a SSTO. Now this SSTO right here, as you can see, had problems. The girders in the back popped. I was trying to go for that hopper. If you guys remember the hopper that went from North Pole or South Pole. The way it landed was really nice. I tried to, I wanted to replicate that. But unfortunately this design was just not having it. So I had to save Valentina. And that's when I realized that those service bays actually create a shit ton of drag. A long, long time ago, I actually built SSTOs that utilized the space, no, space, blah, 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 the service bay with the girder inside of it. So that when service bay was closed, it would be aerodynamically sound going up but as soon as it came back down I could open up the service bays and create a shit ton of drag. So my theory was that it, it has a lot of weight in the back so when it's almost empty of fuel it would want to go in ass first. Of course you see the little parachute that's in the back there. That's because I don't have an aerodynamic nose cone so having something back there is better than nothing and I didn't want to put another command pod back there because that would be fucking weird as shit. So I just used the little uh, the little parachute thing for like a you know to get rid of the little green ball that was back there creating all that drag anyway so the theory was you can see it's you know, in, the, in the here it's it's like really unstable as fuck that's because there's no we don't have struts yet so we don't have we don't have struts we don't have auto struts nothing so it's only connected by two points in the middle of the fuselage good <laughs> Great, but uh, so the theory was, all, once it used up all its fuel and got up there, once when it came back down, it would create drag in the back, but it would create a shit ton of drag in the front. Look how beautiful that is. That thing is just fucking gorgeous. In this mission, I actually had two passengers. <laughs> yeah, it was a maiden flight, but I was so confident it was going to work that I went ahead and got two passengers for it. Anyway, they did not know this, by the way. Uh, they were under the impression that this was a tried and true vehicle. So, you know, ignorance is bliss. But it worked. A shit ton of drag in the front, some drag in the back with some weight on it, made the whole thing pancake beautifully into the atmosphere, slowing it down very quickly. Uh, the... 
I had to be careful, of course, because I didn't want to put too much time warp on it. I don't want this damn thing to snap. But now the mission, now that I know the vehicle worked, the mission was to try to get as close to the KSC as possible in order to get the maximum amount of fundage back from the vehicle. Now, I was trying to go for an ocean landing every single time, but I was confident that if it landed on the ground, it'd be okay because those service bays can act like makeshift landing gears. As long as I had the parachute still activated, I could land on my nose as long as those service bays were open. It would keep the whole thing from blowing up. Every single mission I had after this, with transporting tourists into orbit was simply just to kind of fine-tune the ascent profile as well as the re-entry in order to get as close as I can to the KSC. The third mission, I nail it. I mean, other than landing right on top of the KSC, I landed a little bit farther away from it, but pretty much pretty close. So now I've kind of understand when to re-enter and how low to re-enter and all that jazz. It's not perfect because I need wings. If I had wings, I could glide myself right back to the KSC. But for the very beginning, the very start of a passenger SSTO, it was beautiful. It was beautiful for, for the very first, very first ever passenger SSTO. It was perfect. But anyway, this craft has made it out of the X07S uh, name configuration. It is now a tested, tried and true vehicle. An early, early vehicle but it's no longer experimental and this is where you guys come in what should we name this thing i've thought of several things i thought of tristar i uh, 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 I thought maybe I could do the, the tri, uh, Trident Star, like the other SSTOs in the past. I mean, it does have three fuselages. I don't know. I, I was thinking about calling it Cerberus, like the <laughs> like the like the uh, mythical dog that has three heads. But Cerberus is more of a more of a guard attack vehicle. It's it's more military. It's it, it, you know uh, it's not very uh, it's not very um, nice sounding when it comes to oh just a pleasant ride in space now it'd be like board the cerberus and people are going excuse me what i mean would you board a plane that had more of a warrior name on it just to travel from one place to the other okay don't answer that okay don't answer that but i'm just saying your average person would be like well, why is it named after a, a a mythical being of war you know yeah you want something more pleasant sounding but anyway so if you guys come up with a name for this this would be great i'll read the comments below but that is pretty much it oh my fuck that is pretty much it uh don't worry i haven't stopped making project zomboid stuff that'll come out sunday uh, I was just, uh, I got uh, kind of obsessed with this, and so it, this this particular video is going to come out Saturday. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Love you all. Oh, fuck, I forgot. The uh, If you liked this video, please leave a like. <laughs> and if you loved it, remember to subscribe if you loved it. And also, we have a membership program. If you become a member, get cool little emojis and badges and stuff next to your name. Pretty cool. Check it. Check it. And of course, we have <sighs> the bell notification. Quote, air quotes, bell notification right if that even people say it works but i don't know but anyway so love you all stay safe and i'll see you in the next video bye for now bye bye